Good morning. I'm here at the Iowa State Bar Association headquarters uh, office with uh, Dwight Dinkler, the executive director, Doug Strike, uh, assistant legislative counsel, myself, of course, Jim Carney. Um, and we want to talk to you about some issues that are going to be coming up for discussion at the Board of Governors meeting in a couple of weeks and uh, matters that relate to uh, the legislative uh, program of the bar. Probably the first thing we should talk about, uh, given the, all the comments we're getting back from folks and concerns that are being expressed around the state, is the judicial branch budget. Uh, you will have material that will explain this, but the judicial branch received $178.7 million in, in funding this year. That was $5.4 million short of what they needed for their current operating budget. As a result, the, the court has uh, implemented some cost savings, primarily in the area of reducing the number of court service days. So uh, all around the state, uh, if you've had weekly court service days, you're gonna go to half or about 26 court service days a year. Secondly, they've reduced the travel by judges, which means that judges will not be rotating and there's a, a fairly significant uh, cost savings with that. Uh, the other item that they've done is that they've put a freeze on hiring uh, judicial vacancies and appointing judges. There are about 90 judicial uh, vacancies open right now. By that I mean employees throughout the state and nine judges that have not been appointed. They're gonna wait at least six months uh, to make the uh, judicial appointments which will save some revenue or save some money. Uh, and then they'll delay filling spots. Uh, we've heard uh, complaints around the state where uh, positions are open, they're not being filled, and there's only one person in the clerk's office. If you care about this, and if you're being affected in your district, there's some things, some very simple things that you can do between now and the election. And I want to emphasize, we want to emphasize that there will be, there'll never be a better time to get your legislator's ear than now. They're running for re-election, or if they're a new legislative candidate, they're running for election for the first time. They will listen to constituents. Between now and November, it is our goal to really mobilize uh, the state bar members and to get them to talk to their local legislators and legislative candidates. You've, you need to do this. And we always refer to the very famous uh, saying by Tip O'Neill, the former uh, speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, all politics is local, and that means you. So please take the time to talk to your local legislator or legislative candidates out there. Uh, and also, you can write the governor's office, and we have information telling you how to do that. The governor has to pass through the judicial branch budget to the legislature. But the key is we need the governor's support then to not only pass it through, but to support it in his conversations and work with the legislature. So uh, there'll be a lot of discussion about the judicial branch budget and the shortfall of 5.4 million. We recently had a meeting with the uh, judicial branch and we uh, ask them uh, what they're gonna be looking for this year. We know that they'll, they will need an increase. If the increase is five million this year, if they don't get it, we're gonna be 10 million short. There will be more significant changes and reductions in services, closing of courthouses or whatever it may be. So please take a look at the material we've, we've provided you. Uh, the second thing we wanted to talk about is a top priority of the State Bar Association probate section, and that deals with our probate cost bill, where we're trying to uh, remedy the problem of the uh, judici district courts, some judicial districts and judges uh, and clerk's offices, collecting fees on assets that are not really subject to administration, that pass automatically by law. There's a disparity around the state. We're trying to resolve that. We've had legislation introduced uh, in the past. Um, last year, uh, the legislation uh, passed out of a committee in the Senate. 
uh, passed the Senate, went over the House, and it died in the House. Uh, we'll be coming back and revisiting that. It's a very important issue to anyone who does probate, and most importantly to our clients who are having to pay these fees uh, that they should not have to pay when the court is not involved in the actual administration of the assets. The third item we wanted to alert you to that we'll be discussing is the very um, publicized Wyckoff case. Uh, that's where the young child uh, was um, uh, killed or died uh, while in um, custody of uh, his mother. And the father has um, mobilized a, a great deal of publicity and, and made uh, uh, a lot of uh, efforts to uh, get involved in the legislative process early uh, by contacting legislators and what have you to change Iowa law so that there is a presumption of joint custody from the very beginning. The Iowa State Bar Association Family Law Section has looked at this. They've looked at it in the past. This is not a new concept. Legislation's been around before, and our Family Law Section strongly opposes that um, uh, proposal or what will be a proposal next session, and we'll have members of the Family Law Section there at the Board of Governors to discuss that issue as well. Um, that is the, the presumption of joint custody, which we will oppose. There are other things that have been percolating uh, through the summer here that uh, we'll, we'll probably discuss with you. Uh, the Iowa Land Title Association may, may come with a bill that would affect title guarantee. We've been working uh, with and meeting with Tara Lawrence, the executive director of Iowa Title Guarantee, uh, to have discussions about the program. Um, one issue relates to attorneys who do abstracting. Uh, there are approximately 50, abs 50 attorneys who have obtained waivers um, around the state uh, to do abstracting. Approximately 11 of those are statewide waivers. And there's going to be uh, consideration given to requiring attorneys to show some degree of competency when they're doing abstracting and working and doing uh, uh, projects work for the Iowa Title Guarantee. Uh, so we know that's out there. There's also the issue of short funding of the indigent defense budget. Uh, they had to do a $3 million appropriation, supplemental appropriations this year. And the question becomes, uh, do they wrap that into their request for next year? They've been getting about $29.5 million a year for several years, and uh, the uh, state public defender will have to decide whether to upfront ask for an additional three million, taking their budget to 32, 33 million, or not, uh, when they know that there could be yet another shortfall. They also are implementing a choice of attorney program uh, on a pilot basis, which is very interesting and has been looked at by our criminal law section, uh, and this would be. Uh, uh, the situation where a, a, a defendant could actually request an attorney, a specific attorney, to represent them. Those are issues that are out there right now that we wanted to highlight before the Board of Governors meeting so that you could be thinking about them and reading the material that we're forwarding to you so that we could be prepared to have a very uh, educated and, and good discussion about the issues. Um, my partner, Doug Strike, um, the Assistant Legislative Counsel, is going to talk to you specifically about the budget and try to explain uh, the uh, budget situation, which will not be good uh, and will be uh, challenging uh, again next year. We want to thank you for all of your great support of our legislative efforts, lobbying for the bar, uh, but we need even bigger and better support this year uh, with these issues that we're going to confront, in particular the judicial branch budget, which we know already is having a shortfall and could likely experience even a greater shortfall next year, resulting in further services being curtailed. Thank you very much. Hello, um, Jim and Dwight have asked me to go through uh, kind of a budgeting 101 to help the Board of Governors members understand how the legislative budget is put together or how the state budget is put together by both the legislature and the governor. Uh, the whole process begins really in October every year when the Revenue Estimating Conference 
comes together and gives a preliminary look as to what they're expecting the revenues and tax expenditures at the state level to be for the upcoming fiscal year. The state of Iowa works on fiscal years and not calendar years. The state fiscal year runs from July 1 to June 30th of a year and generally speaking they're one year off from the calendar year. So the budget that will be put together by the 2017 legislature is fiscal year 18 and it starts on July 1, 2017. The REC comes together again in December every year and that is really the most important meeting of the REC because the December REC is what the legislature and the governor must base their budget off of. The governor produces his budget in January every year. Governor Branstead has traditionally released his budget uh, at the same time as he does his State of the State Address, which is the uh, Tuesday of the first week of the legislative session. Uh, technically, the governor has up to 30 days to release his budget, uh, but Governor Branstead has made it a practice to release it in the first week. The December REC generates the number that the legislature can, they're the value of, of money that the legislature can appropriate in a given year. It is statutorily limited to 99% of the state's available revenue. So the legislature cannot appropriate monies that exceed that amount. There's a caveat to that. The REC comes together again in March of the following year, so about the middle of the legislative session, and reviews the, uh, the state's incoming revenue and makes predictions again for the upcoming fiscal year. If the March REC is less than the December REC, then the legislature must actually adjust to spend less money and comply with the March REC. If the March REC is higher than the December REC, the, the uh, December number is still used. The legislature does not have additional money to spend. Understanding that, uh, right now the, uh, the Revenue Estimating Conference has not come together for their October meeting, but when they met in March of 2016, they made a prediction as to what they were expecting to see in uh, calendar or fiscal year 18. Remember this is not binding but they currently are believing that uh, about 4% growth will occur in state revenues. Uh, there's certainly been a lot of things that have happened in the state of Iowa's economy since March of 2016 but at the time they were expecting 4% growth. That would generate about 310 million dollars new money for the state. Based on that number we're going to walk through how this would all get put together. So again, the, the governor will release his budget first. That will come out in early January of this coming year. The legislature will wait until March generally to release their budget targets. And how they put this process together is both chambers, the majority parties in both chambers, will decide on what their top end is. For the last six budgets, the top end has been what ongoing revenues are for the state. Last year that was $7,350,000,000. With 4% growth that will be about $300,000,000 new money. Assuming that to be the case, the legislature will then decide the top end is $7,650,000,000 and they will then work to come up with how they're going to split that between the eight different budgets that are available or that are conducted by the legislative process. We have provided a document to you that both lays out the, the current revenue estimating conference and their predictions and how they arrived at uh, their 4% growth. We've also provided you uh, with a document that lays out all the different budgets uh, that the legislative process works through. Those budgets are the administrative and regulation appropriation, the agriculture and natural resources budget, economic development, education, health and human services, justice, systems, and schools. To give you an idea how the judicial branch budget fits into this, uh, again the state last year appropriated 7.35 million dollars or billion dollars in their total, their total budget matrix. 
Of that, the justice budget received $748 million. The judicial branch received $178 million out of that. The judicial branch is about 24% of the justice system's budget. As we look at what uh, Mr. Carney has spoken about, which is that the judicial branch was short funded last year uh, by five, what was it, 5.5, 5.6 million dollars. And we expect the judicial branch to come looking for another 10 million dollars this year to make up for the shortfall last year. We think it'd be useful for you to understand how this fits into the current roughly 300 million dollars in expected growth that the budget will experience in FY18. That $300 million will be split up amongst every possible entity in state government that is looking for additional funding. The largest of that generally will be K-12 education. K-12 education at 4% allowable growth will consume about $150 million of the $300 million that's expected to be available. In addition to that, Medicaid or growth in Medicaid is expected to consume 50 to 100 million dollars of that addi additional 300 million that's available. To help you understand these, they're referred to as built-in expenditures. We provided a couple different documents to you uh, so that you can see what those uh, various areas entail. The documents we provided are based on the FY17 numbers and show how, uh, how quickly any new revenue can be consumed. Last year, so the FY17 budget, the legislature actually came in to start their budgeting process about $100 million short, meaning that their anticipated revenues were about $100 million short of what the built-in expenditures had already spent. As we look at the entire process, and we're dealing with the judicial branch looking for an additional $10 million, it's imperative that our members contact their legislators as soon as possible because the budgeting process begins in earnest in about the first two weeks of December. Shortly after the November elections, and generally before the December REC, all the caucuses, so House and Senate, Republicans and Democrats, will come together and meet for their first time. And this will be a new General Assembly, so there'll be a lot of uh, freshman legislators. And at these meetings, they'll start laying out what they're expecting the revenue to look like and where they're going to be able to spend any additional revenue. There's been a tremendous amount of pressure to spend increasing amounts of money on K-12 education. That's why it's expected to take at least 50% of any new growth in revenue. In these early meetings in December and, and early in January, legislators will have the opportunity to impress upon their leadership the importance of additional funding for their areas of priority. We need to work to make sure that judicial branch funding is one of those priority areas. We've provided a, a list, again, of the, of the built-in expenditures so you can see areas that consume the new revenue as it comes in. As we previously said, $150 million that goes to uh, K-12 education, 50 to $100 million to Medicaid expansion. Uh, the regents typically come in asking for between 20 and $30 million new money. K, uh, community colleges will ask for generally between 10 and $15 million new money. Uh, we have some growth that's going on in the uh, State Public Defender's Office. Uh, they had to come in last year and ask for a $3 million a supplemental to adjust things. So when we're dealing with only a pot of available money of maybe 50 or $60 million, we need to make sure that our $10 million ask is a priority very early on and that money is, is uh, segmented off from other budgeting decisions that are moving forward. With that, we look forward to seeing you at the Board of Governors meetings and hopefully this has provided you with uh, some needed background so that we can have a very uh, intelligent discussion about how this all fits together as we move forward to the uh, 2017 legislative session. Thank you.